can start our webinar, How to Advance the Digital Transformation Using IBM Planning Analytics and Analytics, especially today on working capital optimization. Before we start, some governance related to the webinar. Um, you can have, in fact, your full conversation and hearing by using the audio via your PC or your phone. Um, just follow the instructions which are on the screen in front of you. And we also believe that the best is to have a full screen mode so you can go into the money and see, in fact, on the view and have, in fact, a full screen opening so that you have a good view on the slides and the demonstration that will follow later in this webinar. Who is present in the webinar? Um, first of all, um, myself, Christian Powers. I am responsible for IXIS in the Benelux. And we have, in fact, some other IXIS colleagues uh, who are present here in that webinar. And uh, maybe you can present yourselves um, to start with Christian. Hi, good, good afternoon. This is Christian speaking here. Uh, I work within the sales team of the CPM solutions. And uh, later on is the demonstration uh, I will pick up from Christian and uh, will show you more about the IBM solution. Okay. Stan, can you present yourself? Yes, hello, good afternoon. Uh, my name is I do the new business development uh, for IXIS Belgium. So I am also in the business unit. Um, I am not going to present uh, today, but uh, I love to connect uh, via LinkedIn. And if there's any questions, feel uh, free to reach out. Thank you and enjoy. Vic, can I invite you to present yourself? Yes, thank you, Christian. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Victor Kins. I'm also a member of the sales team. I'm uh, focusing on account management of uh, existing tier one planning analytics customers in the Benelux area, in a specific uh, niche market of the healthcare for business development. Thank you, Vic. We have also the pleasure to have amongst us uh, Peter De Heus, who is an expert in IBM Planning Analytics. But Peter, I uh, please uh, let introduce yourself. Yeah, my name is Peter De Heus. I'm client technical specialist at uh, at IBM, and uh, yeah, uh, support business partners and our sellers uh, regarding the uh, performance management solutions like planning analytics. Thank you, Peter. So, what do we have on the agenda today? So we have uh, four topics. First of all, I would like to start pretty quickly on a short introduction on IXIS and IBM, who we are and what is our core business. Then we will go into the core matter. Um, we will talk today about working capital, what is important in working capital and how do we analyze, how do we forecast, how do we simulate working capital to generate cash. If having understood, in fact, these concepts, then we will swap to a third part in the agenda, which is the live demonstration, how we can, by using IBM Planning Analytics and Cognos Analytics, optimize by changing parameters in a quick way, in fact, the working capital um, components to have a clear view where we can liberate cash and where we can, in fact, block some amounts uh, into our bank accounts. And uh, by the end, we think within uh, 45, 55 minutes, we will end that webinar and make a wrap up and a call to action what you can do into your company. First of all, IXIS. For those who do not know IXIS, IXIS is a company uh, has been established in 1975, has been branded as a company IXIS in 1993. We do have offices in Holland, Luxembourg, France, and the headquarter is situated in Belgium in uh, St. Peter's Woolver, which is a, a small uh, community of Zaventem. Uh, we work on average with plus minus 200 colleagues over those four countries, and we serve all types of customers. When I mean types of customers, we are like you see here in front of you. We do have large companies, we do have mid-sized companies, we do have small companies, uh, and different segments of the market, as well in the public sector, as in the bank sector, the insurance sector, the manufacturing sector, the retail sector. So we are quite large in servicing different types of customers. We service customers with uh, two main activities and services around those activities. One is BI and corporate performance management. Uh, BI is a large word, so we limit the BI function for the CPM, which is the finance domain. 
So we are specialized in everything which is related to optimizing and um, transforming your processes from planning, budgeting, and forecasting, reporting, and consolidation into a real uh, data-driven and uh, digital process. And of course, when we have, in fact, those processes uh, ready and digitalized, it is very important that we get the right data. And so we have also a full stack of data integration services and products that we can offer within that domain. And therefore, we go to the second and to the middle bullet, which is everything related to data, the data management. Uh, we do have an activity which is focused not only on data integration, but also on big data management, on data governance, on master data management, and enterprise data catalog. Those two activities uh, are serviced by our consultants, um, going in fact from A to Z. We deliver most of the time uh, projects with those products at our customer sites, where we start with uh, helping the customer defining a functional analysis, transforming it into a blueprint, which is translated in technical design. We do set up, in fact, the construction, the unit testing, the user acceptance testing, and deliver some project management. The projects can be steered as well, in fact, in a scrum methodology or in a waterfall to the methodology. It depends, in fact, of the size of the project, and it depends also on the culture of the company. Those activities are facilitated by different products. Um, we are uh, historically a reseller of two main products into the market, which are now, in fact, owned by IBM, which is Planning Analytics and Cognos Controller. So already you see a word, in fact, Cognos Insight. But historically, IHS has grown, in fact, with the implementation and the sales of products of TM1, Cognos TM1, which is acquired by IBM, I think, 10 years ago or a little bit longer. Um, in the CPM, we make a difference between everything which is statutory reporting, consolidation, and planning and budgeting, because we believe also that the technology supporting in that is also different, and we believe strongly in a best-of-breed uh, approach instead of an integrated approach. We also have alternative uh, software board and JDOCs that we implement at customer sites. On the big data and the data governance side, we are already more than 15 years a reseller and implementer, implementer of Informatica products. The Informatica is most known, in fact, by Informatica Intelligent Cloud Services, Power Center products, Master Data Management. And we do have other products, Monta and B4Sense, which we will not, will not go into depth there today. We have also a full BI stack, which is owned, in fact, by our company, which we acquired in 2017, the company Credon. They are doing mainly, in fact, the reselling of Click, Power BI, and IBM. And we have one vertical segment on corporate performance management in the healthcare sector, where we developed our own IP by using, in fact, the IBM technology to have, in fact, a full planning and budgeting application out of the box for the hospitals as well as the reporting, home up, and as the reporting officially to the public, to the government is the Finasta. So these are the products that we are delivering with all the services around. Now I would like to give the hand to Christian, who can introduce IBM in a short notice. Christian. Thank you, Christian. Thank you. Um, what we will be looking into today, later on in this session, uh, in a demonstration, is the IBM products for planning analytics and Cognos Analytics, uh, which is the state-of-the-art planning solution by IBM. It uses AI components uh, to help you uh, uh, doing these processes. And what you see in IBM is they have this AI ladder, uh, which helps you uh, in all these steps, which are shown in the slide. Um, at which maturity level you are at the moment. At every, at every maturity level, there is a product from IBM that can help you. Well, in the end, uh, we have these products uh, lined up here, Cognos Analytics and Planning Analytics, which, of course, uh, from IBM as a renowned company, uh, has with a lot large customer base, um, they have been developed over the year, uh, years past uh, a lot. And of course, have also moved to the cloud. So uh, some figures here to show you uh, the, the span of the IBM solutions and also the maturity on the cloud uh, of these, these products. And the interesting thing is these products combined uh, offer you great opportunities in combining planning, dashboarding, reporting, visualization, using the capabilities AI offers you. And that's really where I, 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 IBM is leading. Um, maybe you can proceed to the next slide, Christian. 
Um, there you also see some external recognitions. Uh, well, we won't go into detail uh, on every point, of course, uh, but we will share these slide decks, this slide deck with you after the, the webinar. And using the link here on the slide, you can download the full report in which you can see basically what, yeah, what IBM is, uh, is, 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 uh, is renowned for, uh, mainly the flexibility, uh, just uh, the, the ability to cover specific requ requirements regarding planning and reporting. And uh, really, a large amount or uh, large span of, um, of of types of customers we can cover. So smaller customers, mid-sized customers, larger implementations. It's really a wide uh, spread. And in the report, you can find all kinds of details about that. And uh, based on the survey that is done at our customers, um, well, there are some, of course, some 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 KPIs uh, which the survey uses, and uh, these are also mentioned in the report. But I will come back to this later on the meeting. Uh, I will give back the word to Christian right now to proceed with the cash flow um, uh, part of the demonstration. Thank you very much, uh, Christian. So uh, let's go into the core of the webinar. Uh, let's talk a little bit about working capital and how we can improve um, a manual and Excel-driven working capital optimization process by using IBM planning analytics. First of all, why working capital? Um, I think we all know the expression cash is king. Now, why do we need cash? I think we need cash in each company to survive, to improve our performance, to grow. Um, grow can go, in fact, by acquisition. We will need cash and to fulfill the company strategy. However, what are the different sources that we can generate cash and how complex are these sources to generate cash? So if we look into the, the different possibilities, we all know there is a cash management, there is working capital. We can generate cash by having plans and projects in cost reduction, by having projects and revenue optimization, by the sales of assets, by going to the banks, and taking new debts, um, or by looking into the market and increase our shareholders or request, in fact, new equities. Now, when we look, in fact, at what is most complex, well, you see that new equity will be most complex. Cash management, in fact, is less complex and is also time consuming. Working capital is something we should work at. It is not so complex and it's also not so time consuming. All other elements, go in fact to much more time consuming and much more complexity uh, before we can generate cash. This is the reason if we talk about cash is king, we already have a cash management, but I'm not quite sure that we already have a full owned um, working capital optimization process within the finance department. So that is the reason why we focus today on working capital. But before we focus on working capital, um, we also need to ask in the finance department who is in fact responsible and who is involved in that working capital uh, simulation or optimization process. We have different roles in the finance department. We do have accountants, we do have treasurers, we do have consolidators, and we do have something which I call finance IT experts. And in between all those roles, we also find controls. It is of course that we have accounting which you do the bookkeeping, the monthly closing. Probably that the treasurer is the person which is most involved in operational cash flow management. And he is man he's managing the accounts payable and the accounts receivable. The consolidator is involved because he will consolidate, in fact, the figures, and we also could generate a consolidated cash flow. And of course, we will have people into our department which are really keen with IT and especially not with IT programs, but most of the time with Excel. That's what I call, in fact, within the finance department, the Excel gurus. Now, if we just put up a matrix, um, having the headline of the different activities, which we can find back in all the finance departments, and I see then to the accounting and the monthly closing, the consolidation, the managing reporting and analysis, the treasury, the working capital, planning and budgeting and forecasting, which is pretty important, Storytelling, which is pretty important. I come back to this a few minutes in a few months, and mergers and acquisitions. We see that the accountant is involved in three of these tasks. The treasurer is involved in certainly in two of these tasks, but especially business controller, finance controllers, and group controllers 
are most of the time involved in nearly all activities. And of course, the CFO, which is supervising all the other roles, is inevitably also involved in all those activities. Now, why are these controllers, in fact, involved in these activities? Well, what is the role of a controller? We all know uh, that the controller should be, in fact, a business partner or is a business partner. But what does it really mean, being a business partner? We expect from a controller that he understands very good what is, in fact, the financial outcome of the actions that the people onto the operations has done. We expect that the financial controller can translate those financial figures into actions taken by operational sales, operational supply chain, operational research and development, HR people, um, getting new people, and so on. This is the task of the business controller. But also, he can explain, in fact, to the treasurer, okay, what is the impact of increasing or decreasing the number of account payables days, the number of the payment terms, and all these kinds of things that he sees, in fact, on a balance sheet, or that he can see on a PL? What is the impact of having more or less cash within own uh, possession, or having new equity, or having into the debt? This is the role of the business controller. Now, if we understand this role, we can ask ourselves, how do we spend our time? Because business controllers, they have time, a lot of time, but how do they spend it? And why do they spend it? Because by the end, about all the information they get, they have to explain to the board, they have to explain to the operations what in fact has happened and how this has been translated into financial figures. And that's what we call storytelling. So it is important if we go to storytelling, that the business controller has time to prepare his story and understand what is into the financial figures. So how do we spend as a business controller our time? If we look to working capital, well, we can budget working capital, we can forecast working capital, we can have in fact the reporting on working capital, we can analyze this and we can in fact build up a story to explain what are the different components that influence the working capital. Now, if we see how we spend our time and how we get our data. Well, the most important thing is that the data to prepare the working capital is coming out of different source systems. It's coming out of accounts payable systems, accounts receivable systems, but also maybe in fact from CRM, if we look to customers, also maybe to HR, if we look in fact to the people who are employed that we have to pay the salaries, and in fact, of course, in our ERP systems. Now, the data that we will use is extracted from those systems, um, is extracted from those systems uh, by using, in fact, a text file or a CSV file or an Excel file or maybe an ETL. Once we have, in fact, used that data and that we have transformed that data into an Excel sheet and we have mapped it to the right reports that we want to use, we can start analyzing the data that we have, in fact, extracted and transformed into the reports. And we can prepare our storytelling. What we observe is that most of the time, we spend 80% of our time as a business controller into preparation of the data and the preparation of the storytelling. And we spend only 20% of our time left to understand what is into the figures and why, in fact, we should make an improvement and what actions we should take. Now, the difference should be that we have, for the same budget forecast managing reported, um, an automated tool that we can load and transform the data, but also that we do not use Excels to prepare, in fact, the, the model and to prepare our reports, but that we work, in fact, on a model, which is a central database, which can be accessed through Excel, through web, or through mobile, to prepare, in fact, a storytelling. Having, in fact, that infrastructure or that landscape infrastructure in front of us, we will spend, in fact, 20% of time in preparation of data and 80% of time in really understanding, analyzing, and building up our story. So we will focus now much more on the right part of the slide that you have seen, the database, how we see it, the data into a web screen or into an Excel and to mobile. We will not focus, focus on data integration with products of Informatica, there are other webinars, in fact, foreseen for this 
amongst them one tomorrow morning between 9 and 10 and 1.30 and 2.30. You can still subscribe if you join us, in fact, via the IXIS website. I have skipped one slide, um, which is important to understand what we are talking about in the cash conversion slide. And I will come back to that slide a little bit. Um, this is, in fact, the slide I would like to update. So if we talk about working capital, we all know that the working capital is made of, in fact, the stock, the inventories, the accounts payable and the accounts receivable. So we have, in fact, for those three components, we have processes yeah, in order to cash purchase to pay. The cash conversion cycle is the number of days inventory on hold that we can have a formula divided by the turnover, 30, 30 times 360 days. The day sales are outstanding, the days payable outstanding are calculated in the same way. And by the end, we are coming up, in fact, with the cash conversion cycle. And the objective should be, when we make an optimization of the cash conversion cycle, is that we can decrease the number of days inventory in whole, that we can decrease the number of days sales outstanding, that we can increase the number of days payable outstanding, so that we have a lower cash conversion cycle and that we generate better cash. Saying this, it's easy on slide, but it's not so easy to realize that. And the realization of this is just because we are focused on getting the data from the source system, spending 80% of time in having all that data to calculate that optimization factor. Um, whereas if we go to an automized system that we have 20% of our time and we can spend 80% of time to find the real parameter change to optimize um, our cash conversion cycle in line with sales, in line with production, in line with supply chain. Having said this, I would like, in fact, to have the hand to uh, Christian uh, to go a little bit more in depth in if we optimize working capital with IBM planning analytics, how does it look like? I would also like to mention, um, in the beginning I did not, but now I would like to mention, if you have questions, do not hesitate to ask the questions. Um, we will answer and we will come back then after the webinar by mail, or we can get in contact after the webinar individually. Christian, the hand is to you. Great. Thank you, Christian. Uh, can you confirm you see my screen with the presentation? Yes. Great. Okay, then I'll move on from here. Uh, so as Christian was uh, in introducing uh, you to, um, is the way we can work with tools to optimize our uh, working capital or DSO ratio. And uh, I'm going to show you that using the IBM tools. Um, as I was saying earlier on, we have this uh, portfolio of IBM solutions, uh, which help you uh, really yeah, climb the AI ladder. Um, this is a combination of tools, um, and we're going to see them, a few of them. So on the top, you see the planning tools uh, for planning, budgeting, forecasting. On the other hand, we have uh, tools to uh, really look at what, what happened and really understand what happened and uh, what are drivers that make, uh, make, make, make the effect that things happen. Um, and we also have tools to really see why did things happen and what will happen in the future and how should we act, how should, should we react on it. There's been, uh, an interesting combination of tools which is available. And today we're going to focus on the parts of planning. So we're going to see how to work with budgeting scenarios uh, and how to work with parameters. Um, and we're also going to look, take a look at the data set and how we can use them um, within Cognos Analytics to view, to get more insights, to get uh, to new insights on data and to understand our, uh, basically our uh, position on accounts receivables. Uh, having said that, I will, um, end this part and skip to the screen in which I have my dashboard ready. So you will probably see my dashboard right now. Uh, and this is basically planning analytics. And in this, uh, in this part of the demonstration, I would like to show you the capabilities of to work with your uh, day sales outstanding and how you can influence those using the parameters uh, IBM planning analytics gives you. Well, in this situation, uh, we have this dashboard here for our corporate environment. I get a nice overview of my sales, my net income, operating expenses, my margins. It looks good. Uh, if I look to my actual versus budgets, uh, it's it's all okay. It's it's all okay within margin. Um, so for the no, first overview, good. I have some capabilities here, like for instance, zoom into some lower details. Uh, for instance, in the regions which are shown here, I have the possibility to drill down to the different states, as this is a US firm. And of course, have the possibility to drill up uh, as I like. Um, what I'm going to do is uh, use a workflow 
which is facilitated by IBM Planning Analytics using the chat function in this example. So in this example, there's a colleague of mine who, who asks to review the sales budget in Florida uh, because it's based on the prior year actuals and it's uh, it's a bit high, too high, and we need to bring down expect expectations by about 20%. And then later on in this demonstration, I'm also going to look at the second part, uh, which is a question about the day sales outstanding ratio, which should be uh, lower to 35 days. So we're going to uh, take a look at some insights within Cognos to see, uh, to really understand what's happening. Well, what I can do here right here is just take a look at um, this data in uh, planning analytics at a corporate level, uh, but I'm going to zoom into Florida as the task says, and I'm going to take a look at these budget figures. Well, to do that a little bit more in detail, I go to my income statement. And here I see my figures into more detail. Um, well, as we can see here, we're a bit a little bit behind indeed. So uh, as we're in the budgeting uh, season right now in this company, we would like to lower the budget to really meet expectation, have a more realistic setting. Uh, I can do that just by entering data, just yeah, by entering some, making some scenarios here. And to do that, I will create a sandbox. So I can easily compare my base information with my sandbox, which is my own, let's say, space to play with data. And it's called the Florida adjustments. I will create this sandbox and I will start just entering some other data. Just uh, for instance, I can work here just Say for total year sales, let's let's assume it will be around seven million. And what planning analytics does, it gives me all these blue cells which highlight what the changes are in the solution. So I can easily see where my um, my my budget will be influenced. Well, in this scenario, I would just assume for a realistic expectation, I will decline with twenty percent. I can fill in that right uh, like I did then, but I can also fill in fill it in right here. So I use the shortcuts, which is decline twenty percent. And then I can immediately, immediately see where it is impacted. So of course, my current forecast versus budget is quite in line with expectation. I can see all the details in my planning, my financial plan for the months. Uh, I can drill down on those details and I can further look into what all these effects are in my planning. Um, that's not what I'm gonna do right now. Uh, but what I'm do gonna, do gonna uh, zoom into is uh, my deal si day sales outstanding. As you could see in this prior tab, uh, it does show quite an alarming trend. So you will see it going up here over the year. So this ratio, of course, is impacted by some parameters, as Christian just told us in the past. And to really take a look at that, I will go back to my um, my, my financial summary to further look into that. And I will see some, of course, some impact in which uh, what I've made by uh, declining my sales. I am um, going to look here into the trial balances. And I'm gonna play with the uh, DSO ratio, which has been used here. Also, you see all the impact lines here. Uh, day sales outstanding is 40 for Florida in this uh, environment. So I'm going to work with Florida again. And I'm going to use 35 as uh, an assumption. So to see what the impact of that is. And by doing that, I will just choose to work with 35 for every month. And then further on in this part, I can see how this impacts the rest of my, uh, my plan. So I move on to the balance sheet. And I see the impacts, all, of course, in all the lines. Um, when I see the balance sheets, of course, it shows an improvement on accounts receivable. I can further look out the details here, some visualizations, but that's not really the point of this demonstration. So we go from forward to the cash flow. And as I look into my cash flow statement, I can see my direct, of course, results of bringing down this ratio and um, playing with my sales figures. Um, and what I see right here is these lines per month for the coming year. And I see that, of course, a big drop here in net cash is uh, caused by the income tax paid. So Let's say there's a scenario in which we can um, we can change this. Like for example, we can, we have an agreement uh, in which we can pay it by month and we can pay it end of the year. And I want to see what the result would be for my uh, for my for my working capital position. So to do that, I will go to my trial balance. And in my trial balance, I'm going to look for the line which shows me the detail about the tax which has to be paid. I see it coming up right here. 
So it's here in April and what I can do, I can just uh, yeah, play with the data and put it in another month. Uh, I can also just, uh, for instance, spread it. So I'm gonna do that right now. I'm gonna show you a way to spread data. Uh, I do an equal spread just over every month and I choose to spread it over the months which are to come uh, as of April. So we go to the right in the table. And then I have an equal spread and it gives them, of course, a different view on my cash position. To see the impact, I will go back to my cash flow. Of course, different figures are popping up right now. And I also go, going to take a look at my cash flow indirect to show what this means right here. Some figures. And as a result, I will also interested in just taking a look what it will, will mean for my income statement. And as you can see right here, all the figures are uh, changed based on my, uh, my, 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 uh, my changes. And what I can do right here is just take a look at what results this might bring for Florida, but for instance, also for the total company. So if I go to corporate, I also see which lines are impacted uh, by the changes I made for Florida. And what I can do is if I'm okay with these changes and I want to uh, use this plan as a final version or next version to share with my colleagues, I can just choose here to um, open the sandbox and I say, okay, these Florida adjustments, I can compare them to my base figures, for instance. And if I'm really okay with them, I would just say, okay, let's submit them. Let's go with this data and I submit them and this will become a new baseline for my planning. So this will be shared with my colleagues again. So that's the first part basically of playing with the parameters and really just uh, using scenarios within planning analytics to work on my capital position. Well, as you read in the in the in, in the in the beginning in the chat function, um, there was also another question here. So to go back to this way of interacting with colleagues, um, somebody has made a dashboard, and we're going to look at some um, some 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 figures which influence our DSO, and uh, really try to get some insights out of the data. And to do that, I will go to this uh, dashboard, which is already opening up in a different. Step. So I'm going to show you this right now. I have it already here. Would be best to work full screen for the viewing. And what I have right here is a dashboard which shows me uh, the data which is used and which we have collected about our day days uh, late. So invoices, when are they paid? What's paid late? Uh, what are the regions in which invoices are paid late? And what are some more data we have acquired uh, which tell us more about our accounts receivable position um, separated by some states. So you, you have some overviews right here, uh, just some, some, some clear visualizations. Um, you can get a quick view about uh, in which states uh, the most uh, or the highest days late position uh, has been shown over the years. So the more darker the color in this case, the more higher the days late position. So Florida, which we of course were zooming into back then, is larger and it's quite a large invoice amount as well. So what we can uh, do in this uh, in this example is we can try to zoom in in this data just to show get a little bit more insight and really understand what's happening. And to do that, um, I want to you start with just looking at this. So for instance, you can see the paperless bill, uh, and you can see actually at uh, the distribution methods and the. Um, yeah, the effect on days late. Uh, to get a little bit of more insight immediately, I can use this button and I can immediately see like some averages and some, some figures about the data which is shown in the graph. And then I can, um, yeah, I can zoom into that a little bit more. To do that, I will use something called uh, the exploration functionalities. And I can easily start by just going to the left side and click to choose to create a new exploration. And what I will do is I get the same graph, of course, as we mentioned earlier, but now we're in the exploration mode and IBM Cognos is showing me some details and some insights directly on this data. So, of course, here on the right side, we will see just yeah, what we see in the screen and maybe some, some things that indicate uh, remarkable uh, data, uh, which can help me, of course. Uh, and what I also can do is uh, not just looking at this graph and the insights IBM Cognos tells me, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to explore the data relations. So what's really affecting this? What are the relationships between in my data set? What are drivers? And I'm going to use this data relationship card. And I would like to start by understanding what's affecting my DSO ratio. So what's affecting my days late, my invoices in this case. And Cognos is now 
uh, analyzing the data, uh, the data set I have, and saying, okay, there's a relation between days late and disputed. Of course, because an invoice is disputed, yes or no, and uh, it can be a, an amount of days late. And we have this parameter in the graph which shows is the bill paper the sent or not. Um, but there's more data in this data set. To see that, I will uh, choose on the right side to see also the secondary relationships in my data set. And to get a nice visualization, I have to zoom out a little bit to show you that. And now you can see all the relationships that are in the data set between the data uh, relating to days late. So of course, days late has a relationship with disputed. And it's easy to presume that once there is a dispute, your invoice will be paid later. Uh, there's a relationship with paperless bill. And paperless bill, of course, has relationships with the time of when the invoice is sent and so on. But the smaller the line, the, the, the lower the strength. Um, this gives me a first insight uh, and can help me uh, go further. So I can select some figures. So in this case, I would like to see what these relationships are. So I will select days late. I will also select disputed. And in this case, I always, always want to see also the invoice amount, which is also, of course, interesting to use as a parameter. And by clicking these visualizations, um, Cognos is now um, going to look at this, um, yeah, basically this, these columns in my, in my data set. And on the right hand side, he comes up with a few visualizations which might interest me. Interest me. Um, of course, I can just use this. So for instance, this is the card we had in our dashboard quite similar or in a kind of variance of that. And this shows me the same data, but just in a graph, disputed yes, no, with the line between, and uh, basically in the end, the same information, of course, but um, this is how you can come up to an insight. And that usually come uh, is one of the first steps to create a new dashboard, which is really powerful. Um, if I want to go further in that, I want to use this as a driver analysis. So what I want to do is I get this insight here, but I really want to see what really drives uh, days late. Uh, a way of doing that is using the driver analysis function, which is built in, in Cognos Anal Analytics. And I do that by entering um, the exploration modes with a new card. So I have these three cards right here. I'm going to add a fourth. And by doing this, I have to choose a type and I'm going to choose for a driver analysis in this case. So I have all these capabilities, but I want to see, analyze what are the drivers for this, uh, for the, for these days late. So as you can see here, I have to build up my visualization on the left side. I have my data set. So I have my AR accounts receivable data and I have my days late here. And as days late is my driver to investigate of my target to investigate, I will drag it up to here. Now Cognos is building the visualization as analyzing what affects days late and already tells me something about the predictive strength. And it gives me a quick tree to, sh to show uh, the darker the color, the more stronger the relationship. Uh, what affects this, of course, disputed yes again, and then the, uh, the, um, the distribution methods. Um, I can do it, uh, I can view it like uh, this. I can click on it. Uh, what's usually quite interesting to get a quick overview is a tree sunburst, which really shows you, okay, the lighter lines are not that interesting, but once you go to yes, you have paperless bill and you have electronic and paper, and those are the more interesting parts which really affect my um, days late position. Um, so this shows me in one overview. Uh, if I want to go and really understand a little bit more about what affects this and what's the predictive strength of this data, I can also use um, just the rules. I can just see in plain text what Cognos is analyzing and what he comes up with and what the predictive value of this combination of data is. And it tells me, of course, a little bit more already about uh, the understanding of this position. But it's still a bit high level and a bit more yeah, over the over the entire uh, over the entire company in all the states. If I want to go deeper, I will come up with some more uh, some more examples. Um, one example is to compare states to each other, for instance. So what I can do is I can go back to my uh, card which I had at the beginning, which is this one, and I could just say, okay, this one is looking at. Let me check its fields right now. Looking at all the entire data set, but I, uh, I want to investigate Florida and I want to compare it with other states. So when I go to my data set and I say, okay, let's introduce state as a filter, then I will just drag state 
up to the filters and choose Florida. So my graph will be adjusted. Well, now on the left hand side, I will go back and duplicate this chart because I want to have a reference set of data. And as I go to this part, I choose on the right side another state. In this case, oh, I will choose uh, New Jersey and not Florida. And then I will have another chart. And it's pretty easy to compare these. And one way of doing this is just by multiple select these cards and choose for compare. And then IBM Cognos will ask me what I want to do with it. In this case, just add a new card with both these charts. And once I have done this, I get an easy comparison of these graphs. At least I should. That doesn't seem right. It's taking a look at New Jersey as well. This one should be Florida, of course. And it already shows me indeed some just some uh, some figures, some averages uh, in in the bottom. Well, one other way of uh, looking at the data, if I want to go further, is by um, further de looking deeper into the details of the data. I can, as you can see, I can drag and drop, and I can interact with the data just really easy and intuitive by uh, uh, by picking it up and dragging it somewhere else. Uh, what I also can do is I can use plain text to tell Cognos what I would like if I have a question or what I would like to. Uh, know or what I would like to understand how it works and I can just ask a question right here and um, I will upload it do it in, in, in the full view so you'll get a nice view of what we are doing right here not with all the everything and I will can just ask a question like for instance uh, if I want to drill down in this data and I want to introduce more elements into my analysis uh, I saw distribution method which is not really covered in the data set in the graph right now so if I want to view more information about this distribution uh, center of the invoices, then I can just add it by simple text. And Cognos will understand that I mean, I will mean the data field, of course, within uh, the data set. So I, I mean distribution center code. And that's what I want to see compared with days late. And in this uh, graph, I would only want to see the disputed invoices. So by doing that, um, Cognos is going to translate this and going to understand what I mean and what I want to see and come up with uh, just an example of a visualization that might be useful. And of course, again, that I can use it on, for instance, on a new card, but just open it and dragging it up or use it in my dashboard or share it with somebody else or can do whatever I want. And that gives me some more insight. Um, so this is uh, an introduction to how you can explore your data to really, really understand what affects uh, the day's late uh, position. Um, what I can also do is let IBM Cognos Analytics just create the forecast for me. So as I uh, leave this visualization, I will go back to my dashboard, which we originally started. And what you also see right here is IBM Cognos also immediately gives a forecast, a forecast right here for days late. So the last thing in my demonstration is that I would like to show you what you can do uh, with this forecast and how you can easily just create some insights uh, per customer. So here's the forecast. It's given for 12 months now. Uh, it's also easy, for instance, to make six months or something else out of it. And the visualization will be adjusted immediately. But what I can also do is use this forecast to create a new visualization, a new exploration. And in this exploration, add more details. So for instance, here, my uh, forecast over time of the days late by invoice year month is given. Of course, again, some insights, some, 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 some nice uh, information about the data set. But if I would like to drill a little bit deeper, and I would, I'm interested in showing these figures per customer, I would go to my fields and just see what, what is shown right here on the axis. And I can add a filter. Uh, or I can add a color and I can add, of course, the layout of the graph. And again, on the left side, I go to my data set. And in my data set, I would like to introduce customer ID. And actually, I would like to have the customers as a color. So that gives me a quite busy uh, graph, but it gives me the insight per customer. Now, what might be useful is uh, filter it down a little bit, of course. So for instance, uh, this would only be interested, uh, I would only be interested in state Florida. So again, I click Florida right here. And I'm only interested in the disputed invoices. The non-disputed invoices are really not my 
concern at the moment. So you say disputed is yes. And that gives me the opportunity to just quick, quickly view per customer. These are the customers. Per customer ID is what is the forecast over time, if we can make a forecast, uh, and how what's the day's late position given in the time. And this is my customer, but I can easily do that for any case I would like. So if I would just go back to my uh, entire results, remove this filter, and just want to see not the customers, but really look further into the distribution center, which we were analyzing in the previous visualization, I just go on and select that field and use this in my visualization. And of course, this can be used uh, and shared within the dashboard and transferred to colleagues as well. This gives me all kinds of capabilities in which yeah, IBM Cosmos, Cosmos just automatically gives me insights. Uh, and I can easily just as a business user click and drag and drop and get more insights into the data set. Um, this was the part of this demonstration. So uh, by leaving this, I would like to give the word back to uh, Christian and I will put the presentation back on screen so we can move on with the next part of the agenda. Christian. Thank you very much, Christian, for um, this uh, nice and interesting demonstration. Uh, we are now uh, 10 minutes before the hour, so we have 10 minutes to go. Uh, let's make just a, a wrap up on what we have uh, seen, um, what we have learned in that webinar. So I think first of all that we explained um, what is the use, the objective of using IBM planning analytics for working capital and optimization. So you have seen in the demo that Christian has given um, that once all the data is captured together in one central frame, um, and is modelized that it becomes very easy to analyze and to understand what the data tells us so that you can build up, in fact, a storyline. Um, trying to do this in Excel was quick as we have done here, I think is impossible, but there's a nice challenge. Um, artificial intelligence infused by IBM Planning Analytics and IBM Cognos Analytics will help you to spend more time in understanding what is to what is happening into the company, not only in working capital, but also when you will analyze comparisons between driver-based budgets and driver uh, reported actuals. Um, what is very interesting also when you do simulations to optimize, in fact, your working capital, um, you can make, in fact, uh, your own proper simulations in a sandbox without other people necessary to be informed of, so you can play around. Um, what is also pretty important is that the data is in one central point of uh, truth uh, gathered. So it is available based on the security settings that you have set up within your company to all the different people. And this by access of one portal, which is the workspace. That is very important then because you will all access the same framework and the portal, which is workspace. And depending on your security, you will be able to see, in fact, what information you can read, what information you can analyze, um, and what is the story behind. So IBM Planning Analytics and Cognos Analytics will definitely help you uh, to digitalize further your financial processes. And um, you need to consider this as a long-term supported uh, application into the market by a leading company. Um, I do stress, in fact, that information because I know there are quite a lot of companies into the market uh, helping, in fact, the customers to optimize this. But it is important that we are aware that we are working with a company as IBM, uh, which is a leading company, in fact, into uh, applications for finance. Um, and that company is already a long time on the market. Um, it is a sustainable uh, solution. It can automate the processes, uh, and it is also scalable in large organizations. And as you have seen, the application uh, can be set up in a very user-friendly way. Um, it is intuitive for end users, which is very important to access the application. And, and all the applications in IBM Planning Analytics and Analytics are mastered, in fact, by key users and administrators. Um, the profile of an administrator and a key user does not necessarily need to be, in fact, an IT person. The profile of administrator and key users amongst our customers are most of the time um, business people, controllers, like I'll call them the finance IT experts, 
like you remember in the beginning of the slide. So these are the profiles that we can use. So to end up um, with the slide, um, we can go to um, a call to action. So I would suggest that you, if you have some time, uh, or you can make some time for it, that you dig a little bit into your own organization and um, that you ask yourself um, if I make, in fact, the cash flow and I want to simulate the cash flow, what are the elements of my working capital I can influence? Eh? Can I influence my day's inventory on hand and hands? Can I influence my accounts receivable, my account payable, my DSO, my DPO? Uh, are these parameters available? And if they are, yes, that's a good thing. Um, how do I play around with that? And do I see quickly the impact of, in fact, changing parameters in my cash flow? Um, if you have investigated this and you come up with an answer, please try to also to be objective and ask yourself, what is the time spent to come up into a simulation of the cash flow? And so uh, is this something that is really easily done? Uh, does it take five minutes or are you busy, in fact, with a little bit more than five minutes? And the third and very important point is that once you have made your simulation in Excel and that you have spent some time in it, how confident do you feel that the data which is in your Excel is qualitatively correct? So if you present your, um, your conclusion to other people in the business on what may be changed to optimize your working capital and generate cash, uh, how confident are you that your report is, has quality data and is correct? Um, so by the end, try to make a gap assessment between what you do today and what would you like to do, in fact, in, in, in tomorrow? Having that assessment, you can set up a business case to realize that to be. And IXIS can assist, in fact, to, um, to help you in defining that business case. Um, for a value of 750 euro, we will offer a one-time possibility to create the model in IBM technology based on your current Excel sheets. So what does this really mean? If you are taking, in fact, an exercise to simulate your cash flow by influencing the parameters ASO, DPO, DIO, and this model exists in Excel, where well, we are prepared, in fact, to transform that model one time into an IBM model for a value of $750. So I think that is a euro, I want to say. I think that that's not as a lot of money. And you will see the outcome very quickly. Take into mind that IXIS is the sole gold partner of IBM in the Benelux with the largest community of consultants in IBM Planning Analytics, TM1, and IBM Cosmos Analytics, and that we have more than 30 years of experience uh, in that domain. If you are really, in fact, interested and you want to learn more without doing that exercise, you can always start, in fact, with your own environment and go, in fact, to the link which is visualized on the slide below, and download, in fact, your own version of planning analytics and simulations on artificial intelligence. So this is the end of the webinar. Um, I hope, in fact, that that webinar was uh, interesting for you, that you learned something. Um, and of course, all the people of IXIS who are present, um, they are present for you to help you to ask your questions. Um, and if you want to make a, a, a translation of your Excel model into an ABM model, please let us know. We will have the pleasure to do that in the coming weeks during the summer period. If you have questions, do not hesitate to send them to the IXIS email address infoixis.com. With reference to the webinar, we will also be glad to answer them. I would like to thank you and wish you for the rest of the day a good day. Many thanks. Bye-bye.